I've mentioned before that I want to make more iOS videos because I've gotten a lot of comments in the past asking for them, but before we can do anything too interesting with iOS, first we need to know how to install apps on our phone. Obviously we can install apps from the App Store, that's no big deal, but in a lot of cases you're going to be given an IPA file and then you have to sideload that application onto your phone, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. As an example for this video, I'm going to be using the iOS Uncrackable Level 1 from OWASP. I've used some of the Uncrackable apps from OWASP for Android videos I've made in the past, but they also have two iOS challenges available, and I may make a video in the future actually solving this challenge, but for this video I'm just going to use it to show how you can actually install those IPA files onto your device. The first thing we're going to do is just download this file, and that's going to give us this uncrackable level1.ipa file. And one note before I continue, I've mentioned it in previous videos, but if you are doing anything with iOS apps, I highly recommend that you use a MacBook or some sort of Mac device in order to work with these apps. There are some things you can get away with using a Linux or a Windows machine as your test machine when you're working with iOS apps and iOS devices, but a lot of the things you're going to need to do, you really need a Mac device in order to do anything really worthwhile. So if you plan on doing any pen testing or any work using iOS apps in the future, I highly recommend going with a MacBook or a Mac Mini or getting some sort of Mac device to actually do your testing with. But now that I have my IPA file downloaded, now I'm going to take my iPhone and I'm going to plug it into my MacBook. And this is an iPhone 7 running iOS 15 and it is jailbroken right now. I made a previous video showing how to jailbreak this device, so if you want to check that out, feel free. But now that I have my device plugged in and I have my IPA file, now I'm going to try to sideload this IPA file onto my device. There are a few different tools out there that you can use to sideload IPA files like this, but one that I use a lot and what I prefer is one called iOS Deploy. You can install it directly from GitHub if you want to do that, or there's also an NPM package available if you want to install it that way instead. Once you have iOS Deploy installed and you have your iPhone plugged into your MacBook and you also have that IPA file downloaded, now we can try installing our IPA and we're going to do this by just running iOS Deploy dash B uncrackable level one dot IPA. But now we're going to run this and see what happens. And we see that there was a problem and it stopped at 70% verifying application. And that's because this application requires re-signing before it can actually be installed on our device. This isn't something you will have to do with all apps. Sometimes you may get an IPA file that will just install immediately like this and you don't have to do any re-signing. But if you see this stop at 70% where it's verifying application, that means that you have to re-sign the application. To do this, we're going to have to use something called Xcode. So you should be able to install Xcode on your MacBook with no problem, just from the App Store or something. This is a bit of an older MacBook and this is a older version of Xcode. So things may look slightly different, but hopefully you'll be able to get the idea of what you're supposed to do, even if some things are in slightly different places on your version. Once I launch Xcode, I'm going to create a new Xcode project and I'm going to choose a template for iOS, an app, click next, and my product name, I'm just going to call it Provision 2024. And when it asks for the team, I made a free Apple ID. If you have a actual developer license, if you work for a company or if you do actual iOS development, or if you're just going to be doing a lot of this kind of stuff, it may be worth it to get an actual Apple developer ID, which I believe costs like maybe 300 bucks. I don't remember exactly. But if you don't have an actual developer license, you can just create a free Apple ID and you're going to have to do a little bit more work with that free ID, but it still can work for our purposes. So I'm just going to add the team as my free Apple ID that I created and my organization identifier. I'll just call it core secure dot subscribe. And then it fills out the rest of the bundle identifier with the name of our product. And I'm going to make it Objective C and I'm going to make it Storyboard instead of Swift. I think it would probably work just as well if you did Swift, but I just always do Objective C. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to click Next. And I'm just going to add it to my desktop for convenience. And now it created just these little app files for this empty application that doesn't have any content in it. And we don't care about that. We're not actually worried about making an app. We just need to do this to get a certain file that we need in order to actually sign our app. So if we go to signing and capabilities, we select our target right here as the app and we see that our team is selected. We have the bundle identifier 
and we have our phone plugged in and we can see that it's right there listed as the phone that is connected and I'm going to click the play button and see if we can build this project and install it on our device. Now we see that the build succeeded, but it could not launch. And then on our iPhone, it says untrusted developer. Your device management settings do not allow using apps from this developer. And we see that it did try to install our app, but when we try to launch it, it again just says untrusted developer and it won't launch. But if we go to settings, general, and then scroll down to VPN and device management, we see that we have a new entry here that says developer app and is not trusted. So I'm going to trust that, click trust. And now if I go back, now I can actually launch the app. It doesn't have anything there. It's just a black screen. There's no content there, but it did launch the app. So now that we have our developer trusted, now we need to find a specific file that we need in order to sign a different app that will actually run on our device. So to find this file, I'm going to go to product up in the top, and then I'm going to go down to show build folder in finder. And now we see these two folders and we're going to go to product debug iPhone OS. And now we see this provision 2024 file and I'm going to right click it and show package contents. Here we see a bunch of files and directories. And the one that we actually need is right here in the middle called embedded.mobileprovision. So I'm going to copy that file and now I'm going to paste it in the directory with my IPA file. And I'm going to use this tool node apple sign. And again, just like iOS deploy, you can install it directly from GitHub or again, there's also an NPM package available if you prefer installing it that way. So now that we have our mobile provision file and we also have our IPA, now we're going to run apple sign with the flags dash CWA dash M and then the name of our mobile provision file dash B and the bundle name of our app that we created in Xcode, which for me was core secure dot subscribe dot provision 2024 and then the name of our IPA file. And I'll mention right here that if you have an actual enterprise developer account, like I mentioned earlier, you wouldn't have to include that bundle ID. For whatever reason, it works just fine with the CWA-M mobile provision and then the IPA file name if you have that developer account. But for some reason, if you have the free account, you have to include the bundle ID. I really don't know why, but that's just how it seems to work from my experience. But now that we have that command all written out, we're going to run that. And now we see that we have a new IPA file. It's now uncrackable-level1-resigned.ipa. So now that we have that new file, we're once again going to run iOS deploy-b and then the name of our new IPA file with that resigned at the end. And this time when we ran it, it didn't get stopped at that verifying application step and it was able to complete the install and 100% install the package. And now on our phone, we see that new uncrackable level one app and we can actually open the app and it just says a secret is found in the hidden label. And this is where you would actually start solving this challenge, which maybe I'll make a video about that later. But for this video, I just wanted to show how you can actually install those IPA files. And just a couple little notes about the difference between a free Apple ID account and using a developer account. Like I said before, you do have to include that package name in your um, Apple sign command that you wouldn't have to do if you had a developer account. But also another pretty big issue, if you look at this provision file, it says it actually expires in six days. So when you have a free account, you actually have to recreate this mobile provision file every week. It only has a seven day lifespan before it expires and then you have to create another one before you can actually sign another app. But if you have a developer account, it'll actually last for an entire year. So that's probably the biggest issue of the difference between using a free account and a developer account. So if this is just something you do every now and then, if you maybe work on a pen testing team that does application pen tests, and every now and then you get a mobile app that you have to test, then this is fine. You can just use a free account and just create a new provision file every time. But if you're pen testing iOS apps on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis, it's probably worth it to get that uh, developer license just so you don't have to create that embedded provision file every single time you need it.
But I hope this was helpful. If there are any other topics about iOS stuff that you want me to take a look at, I have a few ideas coming up that I think are pretty cool and pretty interesting. But if you have any other ideas, let me know. And let me know if you want me to solve this iOS crack me challenge in a future video as well.